The most interesting guests. The coolest conversations. Keep watching episodes of the Grizzly Podcast. Hosted by Irvin Scott. Follow the Grizzly Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and many more apps to have our episodes delivered right to your iPhone, Android, or any other device whenever they're released. Can't get enough of the Grizzly Podcast? Stay up to date with all our latest news, events, and behind-the-scenes footage by visiting grizzlypodcast.com. A new year means a fresh start. This year, try new things, break bad habits, and get out of your comfort zone. Happy New Year, everyone, from your friends at the Grizzly Podcast. So what does it mean to be on your Grizzly? It means hard work, dedication, and it means progress beyond your Grizzly. Hard work, dedication, and progress. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. And if you're busy making moves, say it with me. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. I'm on my Grizzly, y'all. I'm on my Grizzly. And if you're busy making moves, say it with me. Coming to you from the City of Angels, this is the Grizzly Podcast, hosted by Irvin Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Grizzly Podcast. My name is Irvin Scott. I am your host. And today I am joined by a special guest. She is an actress and ambassador for Humanitarian for Empowerment, Boo to Bullying, The Midnight Mission, and Self-Help Africa. She is the wife of U.S. Rugby Hall of Famer and past Grizzly Podcast guest Todd Clever. She's also best known for her roles on Castle, Grey's Anatomy, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., NCIS, Diagnosis Delicious, and Netflix's Fatal Affair. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today, Maya Stoyan. You have done your research. Oh my hey. gosh. I was like, wait, I've been in all that? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here, the Grizzly Podcast. You know, uh, it's so great to have you on the show because obviously we've had your husband Todd on the show before and you know, we couldn't wait to get you on, especially because you definitely embody what we do on the show. Uh, this is the Grizzly Podcast and what that basically means is that this is a show that represents people that are basically on their grind, on their hustle, doing everything they can to help motivate others as well to keep uh, hustling on their end. So on top of that, uh, you know, you have a very uh, interesting uh, story. Uh, you've done so much. You've accomplished so much in your career. And basically, that's what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to be talking about how this whole journey got started. So uh, Maya, take us back. You were born and raised in Geneva, Switzerland. Is that correct? Yes. Absolutely. That is correct. And I was, um, I lived there till I was 18. So I was born and raised there. And um, at the age of 15, I actually transitioned into an international school. Um, but prior to that, I was in a, in a public school speaking French only. And then all of a sudden, my mom just had this sixth sense that I should go to international school. And uh, I'm so glad she did because it led me to America. I got a golf scholarship. I was playing on the Swiss national golf team. And that led me to um, getting a scholarship in, in Connecticut. So yeah, then I lived for four years in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, it was an interesting transition of figuring out what I really am passionate about because there was golf and then there was um acting. I was in an actor training. Um, that was my major. And so it was just too challenging to do both. And I, and I really, you know, fell in love with the craft of acting, but I had no idea that I was going to be an actor. I really, it, you know, it's one thing growing up in America and seeing, you know, movie sets or hearing about movies, but when you grow up in Switzerland in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's, it's a very, sort of alien dream to think that one day perhaps one would end up in in Hollywood and be a, an actor a working actor you know so I think it was a dream but I think um 
I, I, I didn't, I didn't really think of how it would be possible. <laughs> so it was, it kept me very present. That's for sure. I mean, it, it was always a dream. It was always something that I loved. I, I was very detached in a sense. Um, but I think once I came to California, that's when the dream became very real. And I sort of put everything I have on the line. Like I didn't want, I, you know, I didn't have my papers. I had one year to basically prove that I was worthy of staying in the country, you know, visas, et cetera. I had to get an O-1 visa, which I got denied multiple times. And, um, and I just wouldn't take no for an answer. So I found different loopholes in order to stay. Um, but I was at that point, once I came to California, I was very determined to make it. <laughs> So I'm not too familiar with uh, the International School of Geneva. So uh, just based on what I read, uh, it seemed very interesting to me. So I want to ask you, what was it like attending the International School of Geneva? You know, my parents gave me the most incredible opportunities throughout my life. And I'll, I'll you know, that's something that I'm so thankful for. And, um, you know, to be honest, what was so wonderful about being an international school was that I was surrounded by all sorts of different ethnicities, different cultural backgrounds. I mean, just my best friends alone, one of them was from Japan, the other one was from Russia, the other one was from Congo. So we were like the United Colors of Benetton. You know, it was it was really special in that sense that there was just um, just a very open-mindedness to being somewhere where everyone was accepted and equal. So in 2008, you moved to L.A. to pursue your career in acting after receiving a bachelor's degree in fine arts and actor training at the Hart School of Theater and Music in Connecticut. Um, and eventually you started booking roles in independent and feature films, as well as popular TV shows such as Entourage, Criminal Minds, Castle and Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Let's talk about Castle, uh, because... Castle was such a great series as well. You played the role of Tori Ellis in that crime series. Uh, and Castle, by the way, aired on ABC. You joined the series during its fifth season. What was it like playing the role of Tori Ellis? And what was it like just being a part of a show such as Castle? It was incredible. And I just want to say that, you know, I didn't immediately start working. Um, just, just so that to give people a little perspective, I think, you know, it is really hard coming to Los Angeles and things don't just happen. A lot of work goes into it and a lot of planting seeds. And, um, you know, one thing that I did was um, just network and get to know a lot of casting directors. And, and um, you know, it was the opportunity of a lifetime and um, just being on a show like Castle, yeah, I mean, it was, I knew nothing back then. I mean, I, you know, I say that, but looking back now, I wish I knew all the things that I know now, because I I was truly, you know, on the beginning of my journey, in a sense. And I think just, you get n nervous, and, and you, you want to do things the right way, you want to be perfect on set. And, and I'm realizing now, obviously, with experience, the looser you get, the more you're able to sort of, you know, um, do your do your job in a, in a way that feels relaxed and and confidently, you know. Um, but back then, sure, I mean, every episode that I would be on, I would just thank my lucky stars, and and yeah, it was it was pure heaven. Tell us a little bit more about what that character meant to you, Tori Ellis on Castle. You know, it's funny because Tori Ellis is extremely smart and um, she knows everything there is to know about technology. And that is probably the polar opposite of me. I can barely figure out my phone. So <laughs> I had to do a lot of research and, and it's interesting. You know, I, I do look at my career and I play a lot of very smart intellectual roles and you know sometimes you just come across a certain way and um and I and I love it of course and 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 that being said also I'm like 
not usually as smart as the characters that I play. So I do have to do the extra work to really learn, you know, what these people do for a living. I play a lot of doctors, a lot of lawyers, but going back to Tori Ellis, like she's a tech expert. And so I really had to know what I was saying. And I, you know, I did as much as I could, but oftentimes it was, you know, it's, it's a lot of exposition. It's a lot of like describing, you know, different IP addresses, different, like, you know, and it's in the criminal world. So it's, it was, it was challenging to say the least, but it was definitely so rewarding. And, you know, I feel like, I mean, I would run lines prior to doing episodes about a hundred to 200 times, you know, even if I had one or two scenes, I would just drill them into my system and make it my own. What's interesting about all that, Maya, is that uh, you did mention earlier that you know, it didn't just, uh, your career just didn't take off immediately because it is kind of difficult to, you know, navigate your way through this industry. Uh, obviously, not only does it take a lot of uh, hard work on your end, but there's sometimes a lot of rejection that goes with acting as well. You're not always going to get the part. Uh, so, uh, it, it, you know, and, and I want to jump into this next uh, show right now, but before I do, um, you were part of Entourage, and I remember you were uh, on that show as Stanley's assistant. And what's cool about that, uh, Maya, is that you work closely with Stan Lee. And who would have thought, right, that you know, being able to work with Stan Lee uh, eventually would kind of usher in that next opportunity later down the line? You became a part of. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, looking back now, uh, how does that feel like uh, knowing that it kind of like, you know, you kind of planted the seeds there for something to come in the MCU? <laughs> you know, I feel like this was total. First of all, it was completely by chance, right? It's not like Stan Lee then remembered me. I mean, on Entourage, let's be honest, I think I had two lines. Um, it was my very first role, I think, on TV. And in fact, I remember, I think I was actually cut off of, <laughs> like, I thought my scene would be a lot bigger. Um, but this happens a lot, especially in the beginning phases when you only have one or two lines. But those are oftentimes the hardest parts, you know, because you have to really just like, okay, this is my chance. <laughs> um, but yes, I mean, first of all, Stanley was such a sweetheart to me and and so kind and made me feel welcomed and comfortable and um yeah I'll never forget just his essence was was really um magical in a sense and um no I mean of, of course like years later to to then be a part of the Marvel world and be a Marvel character that was um and will always be just um something that like pinch me now you know I mean yeah it's something that I'll I'll keep for the rest of my life just knowing that this happened I mean I I you know once a Marvel character always a go. Marvel character <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because yeah. this is something that they can never take away from you I mean you're literally part of the history of the MCU uh no matter what anybody says that character will still be remembered uh, and especially because Marvel has such a large following, uh, you know, they have so many people that like, become invested with not only the movies, but the comic books, uh, the series on television. I mean, you literally have Disney Plus now uh, to kind of help us remember those moments these days as well. So uh, very cool to hear. And uh, on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you played the role of Carolyn Palamas, uh, also known as Agent 33. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what it was like playing that role. And did you enjoy playing that role? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Again, going back to it's, it sort of all happened within the ca the castle era being on castle. And uh, in fact, there were a, a few moments of crossover where I was actually shooting both at the same time. And um, I'll say the same thing. I wish, you know, I could get another shot now with what I know and my experience. Um, but yeah, I was sort of being thrown into it, but I, absolutely loved this role first of all just you know starting off as um you know being good and then being brainwashed into evil and then being able to not only be part of the marvel world but also be part of the hydra world and you know having this sort of bonnie and clyde moment with brett dalton and 
you know, all of it was, was so packed with complexities and, and those are the most fun roles, you know, mo most challenging ones and, and also most fun. I bet. And, uh, you know, these days, obviously, because we talked about Marvel and how big of a large following they have or, you know, just the amount of followers that continue to watch these shows and movies and read these comic books. Uh, does it still follow you to this day? Like, are, are people uh, running around uh, trying to get your autograph and ask you about that character? Uh, you know, hey, are, are we going to see that character back again in any movies? Do people mention stuff like that to you all the time? You know, I mean, it definitely gets brought up in podcasts. I think, you know, during that era, I did a lot of Marvel conventions, which was really cool getting to meet the fans. And at the peak of it, and what while it was airing, of course, you know, you get to meet amazing Marvel fans that are so just like integrated in that world. And um, I would say, yeah, now it, it, it happens a lot less that people recognize me. It still happens here and there, but um you know, yeah, I mean, I, I think, as I said, I think this will follow me. It, it Not every role follows me, you know, but I think, as you said, the Marvel world is so big and the fans are so um, involved in the world that, yeah, I mean, I, I hope it, it lasts a lifetime, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, and I definitely think it will last a lifetime because, uh me personally, I think it still followed you, uh, even with your career now. And you know why I say this? Because uh, you got your own version of Thor at home. And I'm referring to my guy, Todd Clever, that is by the way. so true. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's funny because, you know, when I'm walking around with, with Todd, um, some people will be screaming outside the window saying, Aquaman! Or, or Thor, or, uh, you know... And it's just <laughs> hilarious to me that, you know, uh, so many people think he's the actor and I'm just the Joe Schmo, you know, like next to him. But no, no, you're both great, by the way. And, and I tell Todd this all the time. I'm, I'm like, hey, you know what, man? You resemble Thor, man. Like you could be like the next guy. He you know? gets so it, I think, <laughs> every single day by, I mean, if not like just multiple times a week, people will tell him he looks like Jason Momoa. To, I mean, it happens at grocery store every, especially men. Men love Todd. And it's just something that I'm in awe of. I'm like, wow, like it's, it's pretty impressive just <laughs> because, because he is so masculine and it's, it's great. It's great. I love it. <laughs> By the way, and I love you both together because you're both good looking people. And by the way, oh. you're both really great people overall. No, no, thank you. I'm, I'm, I mean, I feel so lucky to be with him. So blessed. But yes, he makes me feel definitely like, you know, he puts, he puts me up and, and brings me up. So you're his Wonder Woman. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're both very supportive of each other, luckily. Very cool to hear. And uh, Maya, speaking of Todd, uh, you know, I've, I, I've actually asked him this question on my show before. Um, I asked him how you guys both met and uh -oh. he, gave me, he gave me his version of the story. Yeah. But, um, you know, I want to hear your story about uh, how this whole thing came about. Uh, did you guys really meet on social media? That's really funny. We did. We did. We both have different versions of what happened. But yes, we, we, we met on social media and um, he immediately FaceTimed me which is so bold because, you know, like men will text usually or, you know, at most call. But no, he, Todd FaceTimed me right off the bat. And I thought that was so strange. And I didn't pick up because it was it was the very beginning of COVID. And, you know, I was not wearing any makeup. My hair was in a mess. And, you know, I think I was ready to go to bed or I don't know. But so I didn't pick up. But then I was like, you know what? let's just see this guy, you know? So I, 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 I'm sure I put on a little makeup and brushed my hair, but then, um, he picked up and he had this long beard, like the longest beard you've ever seen Todd have. And the, just the hair down long hair. And he was holding his pet chicken. Um, he claims that he was like out in the garden or something, but it was, <laughs> it just felt so staged and so funny. And, um, Already then, like at that point, we just started calling each other multiple times a day on FaceTime. And, and um, yeah, we, we, you know, became friends right away. And then the day we met, it was 
it was supposed to be a very short date and it lasted 12 hours. And by that, by the end of that first date, we decided that's it. Like we're, I met my husband, I'm done. He felt the same way. And, um, you know, four months, four and a half months later, he proposed. Wow. And people thought we were insane because that's, you know, pretty fast, but we knew. And now, you know, almost three years in, I feel like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm the luckiest woman alive. I mean, he is, he is incredible. Very good guy. And I agree, by the way, with what you said, (laughs) not just because he's my friend, but you know, he really is a a very positive guy and just being around him, like he makes you seem like, you know, you were so important. Uh, I mean, I did that event with you guys back at, uh, back in August uh, at Top Golf, And uh, I mean, I was there just kind of cheering him on, but the entire time I was doing that, he's just kind of making me feel important. He's like, Hey man, do you need something? You need this, you need this, you know, I mean, Again, the guy was so busy meeting so many people. The fact that he took the time just to see if I was good. I mean, that to me goes a long way. So shout out to Todd, man, because he's a good guy. Shout out to Todd. Good old Todd. No, I'm, I'm, I, um, I really feel like I manifested him in some way. And we manifested each other. And, and it would have taken a lot for, I think, for both of us to find our person because we we're both very, um, uh, we don't, we don't settle, neither of us, for anything. And so the fact that we, the stars aligned for us to meet somehow, we had no friends in common, nothing. So it was, it was truly just meant to happen, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, and the fact that people said that it was too soon, uh, I don't think so necessarily because no. uh, I think 2020 was a weird time too. And I mean, all you really could do was just talk to people virtually. So, I mean, if you guys both got a chance to know each other, uh, you know, daily uh, through Zoom or through, uh, you know, Instagram uh, you know, live or FaceTime, <laughs> whatever it was, right? But, uh, I mean, that can really help, you know, push you guys in that right direction. So I don't necessarily think that it was too fast. I think, you know, uh, when the time is appropriate uh, to yeah. want to be with this person. I mean, because obviously you, you shared so many interests, I'm sure you got along really well. Um, and obviously, you know, getting to talk to each other, maybe daily or whatever it was, uh, you know, you learn more about the person. So uh, I think it was a great thing that you guys uh, decided. Oh, to. I, I would have been upset if, we weren't engaged sooner because it was just so right. And it felt so good. And, and my dad actually proposed to my mom, I think two weeks in, you know, and they've been together 40 years. So, you know, in in some cases, I think, and also, you know, we're not 20 anymore. We're in our thirties, you know, it's, it's different when, you know, you know, you just, you just do, and you've been Mm -hmm. around and you've seen what's out there. And At, at this point, you know what you want already, basically, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And uh, so again, congratulations to you two. Uh, Thank you. you. You guys became engaged, uh, I believe, August twenty eighth in twenty twenty. Yes. Oh my gosh. You're so you're so on top of it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just doing my research here. Uh, yeah. And, and eventually, you got married on April third, April third, twenty twenty one. Uh, and by the way, uh, I saw clips and footage of the wedding. Uh, mm-hmm. The wedding went down in Lake Geneva. Yes, right. Um, yeah, it, it's where I where I grew up. Yeah, we, we got married. There were 15 guests total. And uh, it's exactly what I wanted. I am not a huge. Um, I'm not I'm more of an introvert. So like the idea of having a 300 person wedding seemed like such a nightmare. And on that day, I was just so chilled and relaxed. And just, it was just so easy, you know, and I just, both Todd and I had zero stress. We both knew we were making the right decision and we had no one to please, you know, with it, it was just our families and um, yeah, I, I couldn't have had a better wedding. Wonderful. Uh, beautiful wedding, by the way, again, Thank looking you. back now, uh, you know, I watched the clips uh, again. I thought it was so great that you guys got to do this, especially, uh, you know, where you were born. And uh, the fact that, you know, everybody was there that was very close to you uh, always makes it special. So, again, congratulations to you, too. And the fact that now you're welcoming another life into this world is even more amazing. Uh, I wish you both uh, nothing but the best of luck with everything you do. So thank you. Awesome. Yes. Um, So after you did uh, Marvel's Agents of Shields, uh, you also made appearances on several other television shows 
one show in particular was ABC's Grey's Anatomy. What was it like being a part of that show and getting a chance to work with Jesse Williams? Uh, your character on that show, uh, you were a badly acid-burned patient. And Jesse basically uh, tries to help you recover through several plastic surgeries. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that role and what was it like being a part of that show? He was so professional and such a kind guy. Actually, little tidbit um, of inside scoop. He actually was there during my audition. It was we were three girls left for that part because it was a big it was a big part in the sense that like in the episode, everyone thinks that I'm going to end up with him. And so we're very hate like it's a very hated character because all the fandom of Grey's Anatomy wants him to end up with this one girl. So they all think that I'm going to end up with him. But um, so I, I still remember being in the audition waiting room with two other girls that are super successful. And I was thinking, there's no way they're going to pick me. And so I went in and Jesse was there and he was so, so sweet. And I just went in and I was super present and I tuned in and um, felt great, left. And he ran after me and he said, you got this. And I thought that was the sweetest thing to like, just let me know. I was like, no, like what? And, um, and yeah, just like the fact that he, he let me in on like, cause it was like in front of 10 producers and, and writers and, and whatever. Um, so that was really sweet. And, um, and yeah, just working with him was so easy. And, you know, as I said, he was super professional and, um, and yeah. It was, it was great. It was such a fun role. What was it like being covered in prosthetics? This one would take six hours in the morning to get, you know, all my prosthetics on. And it was truly a, an exceptional experience because I got to really experience what it was like to have my face disfigured. And, you know, just walking around and having lunch with it and, and noticing people, the, the way they behave, you know, um, and, and just, um, it, it's, it's, it was very interesting, very insightful. And it, of course, it grew my empathy immensely for all burnt victims and, and um, just especially just one's face right i mean it, it was um it was very enlightening yeah yeah i bet um and and again uh, i do want to mention that uh gray's anatomy obviously uh being the show that it is it's been around for like more than 15 years uh so it's a very special show uh the fact that you've also been a part of something as iconic as gray's anatomy uh what does that feel like oh it feels amazing i mean and it's it's what one dreams of and and in some sense i think you know it was cool to recur on castle and agents of shield but those those parts that i got that were lead guests in in like gray's anatomy or ncis or or those other shows it felt like there was just so much meat to them and um like such a such a cool arc of character um that i didn't necessarily get you know, in, in other shows. So this one specifically, I felt like it went really full circle. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was a dream and everyone on that show is, is so wonderful and kind and welcoming. Uh, Maya, you have such a positive. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you're, you're so good about everything that you do. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you take a row, uh, you do what you can with it. You make it great. And then you come out uh, still being very grateful for your career. And uh, I think a lot of people forget that, well, you know, when they're in Hollywood, I think a lot of people just kind of uh, do what they do. And it's just it's nothing. But uh, just talking to you right now, I feel like there's definitely a sense of appreciation for everything that you've done in your career. Oh and I think you've God. also learned from every role that you've actually uh, taken on and every experience that you've actually had. Absolutely. I mean, gratitude is such a huge part of my life. I mean, Todd will tell you, I practice gratitude an hour every day for the last over 10 years. And um, it's a practice that I can't imagine my life without it, honestly. Um, and it's it's the greatest um, greatest asset, greatest tool that I have is, is 
looking at the things that I'm grateful for. And I don't always succeed. You know, I don't always succeed in living, you know, full on positivity and gratitude because I'm human and we're all human. And, and, but putting that as a point of focus versus looking at, you know, the glass half empty, I think is, is so key to have a healthy life. And I hope to implement that at least in our, in our son's life for sure. After Grey's Anatomy, you eventually went on to star in Up TV's film Diagnosis Delicious. Ah! Uh, <laughs> and you played oh the God. role. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I am such a fun. I mean, that's Todd. I think that was one of the first thing Todd watched of me. And I was like, what? Um, it's such a it's such a cute, um, cute movie. And I I yeah, sorry, I, I cut you off, but it was just like the funny. Just that's the first thing Todd saw of me, which is hilarious. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, and, and by the way, it's a it's a great film. I, I watched it myself, and I actually enjoyed it. Who doesn't like a little rom com? Yeah, you know? rom coms are great. Uh, but but back to uh, the film itself. Diagnosis delicious. You played the role of Nina Kirby. Uh, what was it like being a part of this project? And uh, tell us a little bit more about what your character was like in this film. It was super fun. I mean, first off, like it was my first full on lead in, in a movie um, and just carrying a movie and being number one on the call sheet, just like that feels so huge. And I, it, it was a dream. It was I, absolutely. I, I, I really enjoyed the process. I loved the director that I worked with Ron Oliver. He just did the movie with, I think the Christmas movie with Lindsay Lohan um he just directed that and um yeah just amazing people and my character was so fun and sweet and I you know actually she was the most I would say the most like me like bubbly fun kind of you know um so it was it was fun to really play into that and lean into a lot of characteristics that I personally own you know you were also a part of Netflix's Fatal Affair. Uh, what was it like working closely with seasoned actors such as Nia Long and Omar Epps? It was so fun. And they are such gems. And just working, I think, with actors of that caliber, you automatically calibrate back to, you know, a, diff a higher level of, of acting. And I think... Um, it was just so cool to learn from them, you know, and, and their expertise and um, they're both such smart people. And um, I just felt so inspired by both of them. Yeah. So, so again, working with them was, was really, really cool. Also, could you tell us a little bit more about what you've got going on? I've always wanted children. Like that's something that I've, always, always wanted. And especially having a son, um, I definitely want to be a very present hands-on mom. And that being said, I also want to continue doing all the things that I do being of service and, and working and pursuing, you know, continue to pursue what I love, which is the craft of acting. And I'm writing a script right now and, um, plan on producing a feature film. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, this this isn't um, me slowing down in any way. I mean, of course, you know, I, I'm not delusional. I know that this baby is going to take a huge part of my life. But um, but I think finding that harmony between being of service, working and being a mom. And, and of course, I want to be the best wife to Todd always, you know. Maya, uh, for our fans that are watching right now, that are listening to this episode, uh, this is the Grizzly Podcast. So what we do, uh, what we try to do here is we try to help and inspire others to get on their grind as well. So if you could offer them any advice as far as pursuing a dream or a go, uh, what would you say to these people? Mm, that's a good question. Um, hmm. So many things. I think do what you love and love what you do. You know, I think um, it's, it's impossible to, for me at least, to do something that I don't love. I mean, if I'm working a nine to five in an office, like for me, that would be a nightmare for someone else. It's like, that's the dream, you know? 
And I think staying really present with it, you know, oftentimes we look at, it goes back to gratitude, but oftentimes we look at what we don't have and what we still have yet to accomplish, but we forget that in each moment, there's already so much accomplished, you know, you're, you're here, you're alive, you're breathing, you're, we're, we're really lucky to be on this journey and, and really truly the journey is what matters. And, and I think if we can be present in that journey, then, then everything falls into place. Wonderful advice there, Maya. And uh, again, for anybody listening and watching right now, if you want to know more about Maya and her career, uh, the projects that she's got coming up, uh, the NCIS appearance, uh, the baby, uh, Maya, what's the best way for the, uh, what's the best way for our fans and listeners to reach you? Uh, can they contact you on social media? How do they find everything that you're working on? You know, I stay pretty private. I don't really respond to many DMS, but you can follow me on Instagram, which is at Maya dot Stoyan S T O J A N. And, um, I usually, one thing that I do do is I respond to comments on um on each post you know so maybe i'm not as active on dm but the, i also am on cameo so if people want to find me on cameo and want a birthday message or a merry christmas message feel free to reach out to me that way or i'm happy to answer questions that you have about the business um that's that's one way to reach me for sure so make sure you guys reach out to her uh, again uh, to keep up with everything going on in her career and her world. Follow her on Instagram at maya.stoyan. I'm here also wishing you and your loved ones the absolute best. And um, I so appreciate your time and all your research that you did. I mean, clearly, you know, it's not easy doing these these and hosting these podcasts. So I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very grateful. Maya, thank you so much for being a part of the Grizzly Podcast. It was so great catching up with you and seeing you again. Uh, I look forward to seeing everything else that's going on in your career and your world, all the other projects that you mentioned. So very happy for you and Todd, by the way. Congratulations to you both. Thank you so, so very much. Wishing you, again, the best and um, really appreciate your time and and wishing you the best of success with this podcast. You know, I think it's it's really cool what you're doing and it's it's um, always inspiring to hear um, different stories, different journeys. So well done. Maya, stay on your grizzly. I will stay on my grizzly. I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Get, get it, get it, pop. Let's get it. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to the Grizzly Podcast YouTube channel to access full episodes, video clips, and more on YouTube. The most authentic podcast is online at grizzlypodcast.com and on all major podcast platforms. Guest appearances and real conversations that will push you to hustle. The Grizzly Podcast is now streaming. Now you can rep your favorite podcast with official Grizzly Podcast merch from our online store at grizzlypodcast.com. Hi and welcome to Trademark Expediters. Whether you need a trademark or copyright, we can help make the process easy and affordable. Protect your company name, logo, or slogan with the trademark. Protect your songs, books, photographs, and other creative works with a copyright. Complete our easy online questionnaire in 15 minutes or less. Clear pricing, no hidden fees. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Get started today. Learn more at TrademarkExpediters.com or call one of our friendly specialists at 1-800-510-1082. Affordable, easy, expedited service. Trademark Expediters. Yo, turn it up. Hard work, dedication, and progress. Stay on your Grizzly. Yeah.
Thanks for checking out another Grizzly Podcast episode. We'll see you next time.